Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna uh, show you just a little bit about how I catch post pond crappie. Uh, we're gonna use the live scope to actually, not necessarily like get on top of them and, and drop down to them, but we're just gonna use it to be able to see where the fish are, position, so that we can make cast to them. Um, so if you're expecting to see a lot of those those videos like where or a lot of footage where you see the guys up there and they show you the fish and they show you the jig and then they show you catch it on the live scope screen this probably isn't for you uh, because i'm just going to be setting off of them and casting to them and i'm going to use, use the live scope just to be able to see where the fish are positioned and uh basically follow them around also so uh, first of all i'm going to show you on the uh, side imaging here this is what we're going to be fishing there's uh I don't know if you can see there's some crappie right off the top of this piece of structure right here. There's another piece of structure right there. I'm gonna um I'm gonna idle over that. Real fast, let me get turned around. Looks like there's a ball of bait right here. Not anything or oh there's some yeah there's a lot of crappie right there around that hope y'all can see that good there's a whole lot more right over here on this side around that piece so I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get the boat positioned and uh, show y'all how I do it Hopefully you can get some bit of, something beneficial out of it and you can do it yourself on your body of water wherever you're fishing. Uh, these are all, I say they're post pond, they got eggs in them, but it's it's the middle of May, so I'm not sure that they're going to actually spawn. Uh, I think they're going to dissolve their eggs. I don't know what's going on. This crazy thing here won't shut off. Look, it turns off and on. And then it'll just cut back on. I don't know. If you haven't already, hit the uh, subscribe button. Really appreciate you guys' support. Uh, we need all the subscribers we can get so we can keep bringing you good content. Hopefully it's good content. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, let me get everything set up and I'm gonna get to it. Okay. Let's see, let's turn this on so we can kind of get some. So, we got crappie set up all on this brush pile right here. And it's about 20 feet to this side over here. And I'm going to hit spot lock. And I'm going to cast to them. Uh... Let this jig pendulum down. I've got a uh, oh, about an eighth, inch, eighth ounce head little jig. This is like a tomato color or something. I don't know what it is. I found it in my tackle box and it seemed to work good. Um, I'm just going to cast out to these fish. I got it on six pound line. I'm going to cast out and see. Yeah, let's see. Make sure this thing's on. Yeah, it's on. You see my jig going down right there, I think. We're gonna see if we can get some to come up and meet this thing. Oh, oh, oh one hit it, boy. First cast. Dang it, he missed it. There's another one coming right there. It might have pulled my little dress down on my bait, though. Golly, boom, shoot. No, they didn't pull it down. That thing's pretty wore out. I'm probably gonna have to tie another one on there. Or put another body on that body's kind of wore out so <clears throat> let's see here get my little counter we'll see how long it takes me to catch a limit if I can catch a limit you never know every day is different they don't always bite the way you want them to and there's been a lot of people out here there's lots of traffic 
Lots of boats. Ain't no telling how many people's hit this one. Oh, 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 oh what we got? Hit, uh oh. Looky there. Looky there. Oh, gosh, get him in here. Yes, sir. We've made two casts. We've been here two minutes at the most. Nice, good black crappie right there. Oh, we're going to let him go. Uh-oh, I hit the screen. There's one. Boat kind of drifted back, so now the wind has shifted, which it does continuously. It never seems to want to blow the same direction. So now the fish are back this way. And that's what's really beneficial about having live scope because you can see where the fish are and know where you need to cast and man i'm telling you that's shoot that's 90 percent of every all of it i think is knowing where the fish are knowing which direction you need to put your bait they'll move off of this cover a lot too they won't stay put on it they'll pull off of it and when they pull off of it you can just turn this little deal here just find out where they are oh they're there set another cat another another fish i mean it's just we have got so many fish out here on these spots right now since it's post spawn and it has been so easy to catch them now that ain't gonna keep so we don't get to mark him on our little on our little clicker we're not gonna count him just yet throw out there again I'm just I throw that thing according to how far away I am from the brush pile so if I'm 25 feet away and I wanted to pendulum down the brush piles down there you know um, well like for instance this one is in 22 feet I want it to pendulum down I'm gonna make my cast farther than what the depth of the brush pile is if that makes sense because I wanted to just pendulum down and fall like it's natural um, so like for instance I may make 25 foot cast and then I'll see if that's gonna you know get down there to where the fish are and if it doesn't then I'll uh, uh, adjust it my next one might throw a little farther if i'm a little closer than that i may not you know i may not cast it out so far i didn't get uh look at there i was just fixing to say i didn't get on top of where the brush pile is that cast but this fish i saw this fish out away from that uh that pile there and uh he's a better one i'm gonna just kind of grab him he come out there and ate him a minute and then he come up and ate this jig and i tell you what that sucker's got the funk on him Ooh wee i don't know what's happened sometimes uh they can be caught by somebody else uh oh there he goes when they're young maybe too small and they get thrown down in the carpet of, of the boat or something and it rubs the protective coating off uh oh there's number two And they'll grow a fungus on them. I'm not saying that's exactly what it is, but it could be. Fix to make sure this thing's in good condition. We've well, made three casts and we've caught three fish. I think I was saying a while ago about adjusting the, the distance that you cast. So once you get used to how far the fish are, where they're biting at, then there's no sense in throwing any further. I mean, you just throw that same exact exact cast every time, and it's going to come down just the way you want it to, and it's going to get right right in the strike zone. I I would say that uh, probably one of the biggest things that I run across with customers is that I'll tell them, you know, hey, don't throw it, but about 20 feet away, and man, they'll throw it 20 yards away. And then by that time, the bait is swung down underneath the fish. 
and it didn't get in the strike zone so they tend to not catch them as well when it does that just getting used to the distance is is pretty key i didn't get around no fish that time i, I threw the boat shifted on us again let's see they're gonna be right out there should be right in there we should fall right down in them this time like i say I'm, i don't have a slack line but I don't have it extremely tight either. I want it to fall as natural as possible. I see them fish moving around down there, trying to figure out who's gonna get it. And you don't make the right cast kind of like I haven't the last two you don't get any bites you've got to get right where those fish are so very seldom do they just run out there 10 feet and get it you know you pretty much need to go right where they are and uh, let it fall through them every now and then when they get real 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 aggressive they'll just you know they're liable to come from 10 or 15 foot away and smack it but um, for myself, it's always a lot tougher than that. If you don't make the right the right cast, you just don't get them. And for some reason, I'm not getting it done. I don't. It may be that this wind. Uh oh, uh oh. Here's another one. I'll say the wind could have a factor. It may be pushing my bait uh, or pushing my line. There's another good one right there. To where it doesn't fall right down in the strike zone, exactly. Down there, we'll catch him tomorrow. We got, we are off today. Number three. I've got to take days off or I'll go crazy. So we're off today. I thought I'd come out here and do this. Uh, show, you, show you guys how we're doing it. Um, it's, this is what we do typically every year at this time of year but this live scope has just made it that much easier um, used to we just you know position on the pile throw a buoy out mark it and uh cast toward it you know and just keep continually casting and we catch them too but uh this here has just made it so much easier now and um with spot lock and 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 with the live scopes you can see exactly where the fish are at all times it's uh oh, there's another one. I mean, it's just like, it's unbelievable good. I wish everybody could experience how good the fishing is here. Here he comes. Another good keeper. Oh. He, he ate it good too. Well, shoot, I mean, he wasn't going to come off. There we go. I had never caught a fish on this color till yesterday. I've had them in my tackle box. I can't tell you how long. And yesterday, I thought, well, shoot, I need to use some of them things up. Number four. Cause they're just sitting there they'll just you know they ain't doing no good just sitting in the package so i took them out and they started eating them but i'll just be honest with you that i don't think color makes any difference because i have my customers using different colors and we'll have, all have three or four different colors on depending on how many people's fishing with me and we just catch them and catch them and catch them it, it really doesn't make any difference now there might be days where they're a little more finicky uh, they may not inhale one color better than the other I guess I don't know I, I really can't say either way I know that I, I'm very if you ever, anybody has ever fished with me they know I don't change color very often so 
I get stuck on the same kind because I just use what works. And there's another one. What is it? I'm telling you, how many casts we made? Four, five, six casts in a row. He's gonna pull. That's oh no wonder. He's strong, little old yellow bass. Them rascals. I had a large mouth try to eat one of these a couple days ago that I guarantee was between 13 and 15 pounds. And he didn't get him, which I don't know what I would have done if I'd have hooked him. I don't think I would have landed him. I gotta get my towel out and get all gross, and slimy. If I got a towel, what I do? Take off and let it blow out in the lake. No, here it is. I may as well get another bait out. <coughs> Got all these things here, and I don't know which one's any better than the other. I can tell you that these are working right now. That's all I know. And that's not the brand. That's just the package it's in, because I, I just use whatever bags I can. When I'll get something in bulk, I'll just put them in another bag of some kind. I think it was old bass lure or something. Maybe I can get another one out of him. He's getting pretty loose. Let's see if there's any more. Crappies down there. The yellow bass got it. I don't know. Most people don't know it, but them yellow bass are good eating. They don't get very big. Everybody asks me, oh, there's a, well, a white bass. No, it ain't. It's a yellow bass, but I, it's just a, I, I don't know if you call it a cousin or sister or brother or what, but of a white bass, I'm saying. Something's coming through there uh, pretty fast. It could be a largemouth, and if that's the case, they live will slow down. They don't like uh, getting eaten by largemouth. didn't make my cast right again that time but we'll, oh I say that and then I got a bite doggone it we'll make sure we make it in the right spot the next one I don't know if y'all can see much on this screen right here, this thing here or not. Uh, I put another little camera on it. See, that's what starts happening. They pull your britches down on there when it gets loose. And it gets hard to stay up, so we're going to change it. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I got six pound line, seven foot Pro Series Wally Marshall pole, and six pound, I believe it's Wally Marshall string too. I it's, It was uh, passed along to me by a buddy, so I use whatever I can get when it comes to fishing string. I normally don't use six pound line. I hate it. I usually use about 20 pound braid. But in Texas, the wind likes to blow a lot. Look out, look out. There's another good one. In Texas, the wind likes to blow a lot. So using the braid, it'll make your uh, baits drift about oh look at here another good one. oh he's got hung good too all right 
back out there and get healed up for tomorrow and we'll eat you tomorrow. And fire keepers. But I, oh, the wind blows so much that it'll dr make too much drag in your line and you definitely can't get it to fall right in the strike zone a lot of times if it's doing that. So you can use um, six or eight pound and it'll, it'll fall in those areas, you know, right through the fish a lot better. Um, now, you occasionally hang a big catfish or a largemouth bass and end up losing it because, oh! Godly, I don't know if y'all can see that on that other screen I got, but there was bass run through there eating them crappie. Them, oh, and I missed one because I was looking at that. Dang, come here. Shoot. And that might have been a big bass that hit me too. Doggone it. There was about five or six bass come through there, and they ran almost every crappie off of that bush pile. I'm going to just see here. I like this to be a little bit shallower. I like to see that bottom. It blow things up a little bit better. Sorry, grass. My bait's all crooked. I don't like it being crooked. It might fall in circles, and I ain't ever seen a, a shad swimmer round around some upside down surface. Come on, fishes. Now, as you can tell, maybe, oh, shoot, I'm not, I'm not using the live scope to necessarily watch the fish eat my bait. All I've got it doing is just looking at that school over there to know, hey, that school's still there, and uh, it's so many feet away, you know, I'm just going to keep it at that depth, uh, keep it that distance away. I, I don't like to get on top of the fish too much. Um, there's certain times of year where yeah you can get right on top of them and just let straight down and bust the fire out of them and if they're in deeper water you know that's a different situation too but um you know if i could stay off of them and cast at them and catch them I, i'd prefer to do that it just for myself i ain't you know i ain't i don't know what everybody else does but for myself i just seem to catch them better i can catch more out of a place now Typically, I wouldn't recommend anybody catch more than about six, seven, eight out of a spot, and then I'd move on to something else. But here we are. There's lots of people out fishing. And if you find some, uh oh, if you find some, you better wear them suckers out, or tomorrow you may not ever get to fish them again. There's another good one because there'll be people all over them and they'll catch them all and they'll stay all day anchored up on top of them and all that and you won't ever get to fish them again so if you find good fish and good school of them you better catch them now if i could fish on my uh if i say i had brush out that was just um you know not not very many people out on the lake not very many people knew about the brush i wouldn't catch very many i just i'd have as many brush piles as i could and then I would just move from spot to spot and I'd catch six or eight off each one, five, six, eight, something like that. That way they just keep replenishing every year or every week, every day, I guess, for that matter. But if you catch them all out uh, in a spot like that, if you got a little small pile especially, they're liable to not replenish for a week or two. But if you just catch a few, you can go back every every day or so, you know, and just catch, catch a few. But... There's still a lot of fish down there. I 
think there's big old bass down there and he every now and then decides he wants one of them crappie to eat. I don't know how many of them he can eat without getting full. I think my boat has drifted away from him a little bit too. It'll do that occasionally. How? I don't know. Have to throw a little farther. And this jig is pretty small. Sometimes if you like to say, if you're not right in the cone, you don't see it going down through them and nothing anyway. You can just feel them. Feel them hit it. I don't know how everybody else's live scope is, but mine has some dead places in the screen. Oh, there's another one. There's another one coming out of there. And um, there's another good keeper. It's got some dead spots in the screen, and you, you look at that, just little old paper mouth just to was going to come right off. If, if I hadn't have kept the pressure applied to him, he'd have flopped right off. And I think I was mentioning about some dead spots, so there'll be some dead spots in it periodically, that fish going back down to the school right there. Oh, I keep hitting that one. Uh, and I don't know what causes that. Maybe others aren't. Maybe mine's messed up. I don't know. But there's places where you can't see. And uh, so keeping it out at like 25 feet, is better for me there like i said there's dead spots in there that when i'm too close or something like that i can't oh we better click out i can't uh see i'll lose sight of everything so maybe that's the way they're supposed to be i'm not sure so i just i know how mine works and i just try to do the best i can with what i got I fell just shy of those fish again. Maybe one's gonna come out there and get it. Let me see, I'll, t I'll try to move over a little bit and maybe I'll be able to uh, Get to where we can see the fish actually hit a little better or something. <clears throat> well, let me reset it just a little bit, not much. We'll just go over a few feet. Let it get back situated. Straighten back up. All right, where's the fish, fish pile at? There they are. Let's see now if that helps.
either that or I caught all the ones that was hungry out of it. I guess that's a possibility too. I didn't bring no minnows. Sometimes you can uh, catch a few old jigs and then you can chunk your minnows out there and catch several more. Take it at seven keepers. We'll see if we can't get another one. And like I mentioned earlier, when um when you're fishing this particular way, you really don't always see your jig fall down through them. Uh, you know, it's got to be just right to be able to see that and to be able to see the fish eat the bait I mean I'm just I'm using it as reference just to be able to show me which direction I need to cast and you know that there's still fish down there to fish for there's another one good one. Ooh, he got some pull to him. Look at there. Another nice black crop. Oh, squeeze it. Get off of there. There he is. Eight. See if there's some more. I'm very, very surprised that somebody wasn't fishing out here this morning. I got out here late. Heck, it's 9.36. We started, what, about 9.15 or something? 9.20? 9? I don't know. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Many people have been out fishing. Look at there. I can't. I don't know if y'all can see on this other one, but that's a big largemouth coming in there to try to eat him some crappies. I hope he eats my jig. I'll catch him on my jig if he'll bite it. must like not like tomato color or whatever that is he's looking at it though but I've noticed them crappie oh shoot missed another they don't want to bite very well when them bass come in there I think they scare it and they're not thinking about eating they're thinking about living Surviving, maybe. Let's see. Oh. There. Put my dress down on this again. This dang little old jig head I have, it's just some off generic brand, but it don't have any kind of keeper on it. And uh, it makes it hard to keep that jig on there good.
that wind's picking up. It's supposed to be 10 mile an hour, and they usually when they say 10 mile an hour, that means about 20. I hope it ain't bothering the audio too much. This is actually a not a. It looks like there's a lot of fish down there, but it's actually not a very big school compared to what I've been finding. Um, this was just first first one I looked at today, and first spot I've checked. Okay, those bass, they've got them shook up. out of nowhere hey look at there first white crappie today mixed in there with them things came out of nowhere I not a very big one but he's still taking I think that bass ate him when he went down there of the small uh, larger fish are hanging right in here on this bottom part a lot of that right there is them dang bluegills and if you throw a minnow out there you got to get him through there fast they'll pluck all the eyes out of him eat the guts out of him everything before he gets to the bottom Another good one. Come here, you. I'm telling you what. Hey, come here. It is fun. May and June. 
is some of the best fishing down here in Texas that you can imagine. I mean, I'm sure it's good everywhere, but man, it is something else here. Let's try that again. The same cast. Oh, that's a little more. I don't know. That went way outside. I'm going to reel up and throw that in again. See, that cone is small on this thing. You don't get lined up just right. You may not catch anything. Look at there. Golly, holding the pole in my wrong hand like it broke my arm when that sucker hit it. Golly. Look at him. It's another good one. Dang gum. I mean, it, it's just full of them. Full of them. And there's a big bass down there trying to eat them too, and they just still keep biting. Alright guys, I hope you found this video pretty useful. Uh, hopefully, I kind of gave you an idea of something else, a different way that you can use your livestock to catch fish. You don't necessarily have to always be on top of them. Actually, I would recommend you don't. Uh, you know, that's just me. I, I, I love catching them on the long pole, just straight down. Don't get me wrong, that's mud. But you can really catch them good and fast. And, you know, if you're on, uh, obviously you don't have a 